According to the CDC, the U.S. is in the midst of the second largest COVID-19 surge since the start of the pandemic. Experts are predicting that one in three people in the U.S. may contract COVID during this surge with long COVID again becoming a serious health issue. Dr. Philip Levy is here to help us understand where we are and where we're going. Good morning. Good morning to you. Well, the, the phrase uh, long COVID seems uh, self-explanatory, but tell us more about it. What exactly is it and how does it impact people? Uh, absolutely. So long COVID, long-term COVID, post-acute sequelae of COVID, there's uh, multiple different names out there to describe the, the, the syndrome, so to say, but really it's a constellation of symptoms uh, that develop in the weeks to months after someone recovers or at least seemingly recovers from their initial COVID infection. So while people um, may experience cold, cough, runny nose, sore throat, body aches, and fatigue from that acute infection of COVID, that generally goes away after three to five days. And long COVID is the, is, is the grouping of symptoms that, that people may experience you know, weeks to months later. It could be persistent uh, um, shortness of breath uh, or cough uh, without sputum production. It can be confusion and disorientation or so-called brain fog. It can be things like mood disturbances, difficulty sleeping, anxiety. There's over 200 symptoms that people have reported that have been attributed to long COVID, but the bottom line for all of them is that they're symptoms that develop after someone seemingly recovers from the acute infection. And how do you treat those once you've discovered that's really what you're dealing with? Well, that's a great question, and I wish I had a great answer for that. Unfortunately, there's no specific treatment for long COVID, uh, long COVID so to say, but if there are certain things that people develop. Uh, so while we talked about symptoms, some people may have problems with processing sugars and develop pre-diabetes or even diabetes after COVID. So you certainly can treat the diabetes per se, right? But the problem is we don't really have any treatments right now for long COVID. Uh, fortunately, the National Institutes of Health has invested a lot of money trying to do investigations around this, uh, something called RECOVER, uh, which is an ongoing series of both observational and interventional studies. But back to the basic point, we don't have treatment for, for quote unquote long COVID right now. Well, who have you determined really are the most susceptible to long COVID? Right, that's the most important question, right? How can we prevent people from getting long COVID? Because if we can't treat it, let's stop it from happening. And so the severity of COVID infection is really perhaps the most important thing, although anybody who has COVID could develop long-term symptoms. But people who develop severe infections potentially have to go to the ICU, intensive care unit, or, you know, God forbid, even on a ventilator, they're at the greatest risk. And people who are advanced age, people older than 65, uh, people who have comorbidities such as high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, and heart disease are more likely to develop severe infections. And so, you know, it's really important to have heightened awareness amongst that group and do what we can to prevent them from getting infected. Things like isolating uh, if someone has COVID so others who are more susceptible don't get sick wearing masks. But perhaps the most important thing we can do is vaccinate. We know vaccination decreases the likelihood of developing long COVID. And it also decreases the likelihood of having severe COVID. Those two things together are really important. And as the COVID virus continues to evolve and mutate, the vaccines continue to evolve. And even if you've been vaccinated previously, getting an updated vaccine is really important to help prevent long-term COVID. Dr. Levy, can you send my viewers to a website where they can learn more information, have some questions answered? Absolutely. Vaccines.gov is a terrific resource. It was developed by the federal government early uh, in the pandemic and continues to provide great information today. There's info on COVID and its variations. There's info on updated vaccines. And there's also links to local resources where people can find out where they can get a vaccine and even make an appointment. Dr. Philip Levy, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Angie, for having me. And we'll have more local lifestyles for you right after this message. Stay with us.